you lose the Holy Spirit? Is it possible that uh, you can lose the Holy Spirit? Now, the Holy Spirit is the third person in the triune Godhead or in the Trinity. And the Holy Spirit indwells believers at the moment of salvation. Remember uh, what the Bible says in Ephesians 1.13, in whom you believed. After you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So immediately you believe you are sealed. And uh, we know also from 1 Corinthians 3.16, that uh, the bodies of Christians are the Spirit's temple, okay? Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Hmm. So the Spirit of God dwells in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And also in uh, 1 Corinthians 16, uh, I mean 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 uh, from verse 19, it also tells us about the same. See, it tells us that... Uh, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own? For you are brought, bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You see, it's confirming that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is living in us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the teaching of the New Testament is that the Holy Spirit's dwelling is permanent. If he dwells in us, he's permanent. That's the New Testament teaching. And we are in the New Testament. We are not in the Old Testament. Okay? So we cannot lose the Holy Spirit. It's permanent. He's dwelling in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But uh, the most confusing part and where confusion comes in is uh, in the Old Testament. Okay? For example... The Old Testament relates uh, uh, someone like, for example, King Saul. Okay, King Saul, in First Samuel sixteen fourteen, that uh, he lost the Holy Spirit. See, <clears throat> see about King Saul. Uh, the Bible says in uh, First Samuel uh, sixteen verses uh, fourteen, it says, "But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul." Oops. So when you see the Spirit of God departed from Saul, wow, and an evil spirit of the Lord, uh, from the Lord troubled him. So the Holy Spirit can depart from someone? King Saul? That is the Old Testament. You have to understand. Let's see something else. Also, Samson. Do you remember Samson? The strong guy. Okay. The strong guy who lost his eyes and, uh, you know, because of uh, uh, the, the Delilah. Delilah fix, fixed this guy and uh, you know the story. Now, Samson also, it seems that he lost the Holy Spirit. See, Judges, in the book of Judges 16, <coughs> excuse me, verses uh, 20, we see something also here. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wished, and uh, he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. Hmm. So the Spirit of God departed from Samson. Now this one is confusing, huh? And uh, you may ask yourself now, are we going to lose the Holy Spirit maybe when you do something wrong? I'm sure that's what people are asking now. You have to understand, in those days, the Holy Spirit worked differently than he does right now. Since the time of Jesus, after Jesus rose from the dead, was a different time frame. You know, a testament is only, um, or a covenant is only affected by the death of the testator. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us, unless the, test the testator dies, then that covenant cannot be effected. Now, the Old Testament was effected by the blood of goats and bulls and cows and things like that, and sheep. But now, the New Testament is affected by the blood of Jesus, who died. So, immediately Jesus died, then there was a change of constitution, change of... Change of uh, 
uh, uh, Testament. Okay? So, in the Old Testament, you have to understand that the Spirit is never said to indwell anyone. Rather, the Spirit came upon people for a time to accomplish specific purposes, like the, the purpose of uh, 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 Samson and purpose of different people. He came upon them. Let me show you what, what the Bible says. It doesn't say he indwelt. Okay? Judges. The book of Judges 3 verse 10. See, it's all about... See, and uh, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. You see? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Did the Spirit indwell him? No. He came upon. You have to understand the differences also in... Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, these explanations, coming upon and indwelling, they are two different things. And uh, he judged Israel and went to war and uh, all of that. So he came upon, came upon. And also First Chronicles. Okay, First Chronicles uh, 12 verses uh, 18. It also speaks about the Holy Spirit coming upon. And the Spirit came upon a Messiah who was the chief of the captains, and he said, Thine we were, David, and, and, and so forth. Okay, what I want to show is the word come upon. You see, in the Old Testament, it was all about the Holy Spirit coming upon. Just the same way, he came upon the prophets to fulfill different kinds of uh, uh, <clears throat> things that God wanted them to fulfill. So, he came upon <clears throat> to inspire the, the prophets. And we can even see this in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel um, 11 verse 1. We can read to 2. Uh, okay. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 11 from verse 1. Okay. It says, Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house, which looked eastward. And behold, the door of the gate uh, be, behold, the door of the gate five and twenty men, among whom I saw ja, Jazaniah, the son of Azur, and Pelatiah, the son of Benaniah, prince of the people, and said unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city. What did the Spirit do? He lifted him up. Did he indwell him? No. Okay. He just took them for different assignments and things like that. So the Holy Spirit was not indwelling anyone. Okay? He was not indwelling anyone. He basically was instructing the leaders of Israel in different ways. He was just instructing. Okay? 1 Samuel 16 verse 13. It's good to show you all these verses so that uh, I may not be speaking my words. I want to speak the word of God. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon. You see? The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Did the Spirit of God indwell, indwell David? No. That's why David was, uh, after he sinned with Bathsheba, he was telling God, Please do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. Do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. Because the Holy Spirit could come and could live. He was only coming upon. And when you do sinful things, he could just live. Okay? So, the Holy Spirit, yes, we understand. He inspired the writing of the scriptures and everything. Okay? Second Peter uh, 1 verses 21. The Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's why he was coming upon people. Whom by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Okay. Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm reading something different. Second Peter. Uh, Second Peter uh, 1 verse 21. <laughs> the funny thing with the Bible, everything seems almost the same. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. But of holy men of God uh, spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was moving them, was coming upon them. Okay? But it, it was not indwelling them. Now, having said that, we, are, we have now understood that uh, 
The Holy Spirit was not indwelling the prophets and the people in the Old Testament. He was coming upon them. But right now, does he do the same? No. Right now, he indwells believers. Okay? Do you remember, do you remember before Christ, uh, Jesus finished his work and ascended to heaven? The Holy Spirit came and went before, okay? But he no longer works that way. And Jesus, he told us that he will be sending us an helper, okay? He'll be sending us an helper. And he promised this. That helper would abide with us forever. He will indwell with us forever. He will be with us forever. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. So that Holy Spirit would stay forever. See, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Are you seeing? Now the Holy Spirit is in us and he dwells with us. Woo! This is, this is really good. He dwells with that permanently. Permanently. And uh, the book of Acts, okay, the book of Acts, chapter 2, describes the transition from the Old Testament uh, style to the New Testament style pertaining to the Holy Spirit. The disciples were gathered together for prayer waiting for the promise of the Father in obedience uh, uh, to Jesus. Okay, do you remember that? And what happened? The Holy Spirit filled them. Now, when I talk about filling, you may be confused. Now, if the Holy Spirit was filling them here, does it mean already they had the Holy Spirit before? Because in another video, we are speaking about the difference between being baptized into the Holy Spirit and being filled. Being filled is like getting that empowerment and now the Holy Spirit comes in full. He's like, gets full, okay? This is the only incidence where the Holy Spirit is, is, is coming in full in one day because uh, Jesus had promised his disciples that way. But for us, he's promised us that as you continue doing the words of uh, the things of God, the Holy Spirit comes on and on and on because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, let's before we come to this incident of when the Holy Spirit filled these people, the, the disciples, let's check. Did they have the Holy Spirit before? Because uh, once you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit infills you as you continue doing the works of God. And remember, these people, they, they, they worked with Jesus, but uh, until Jesus died is when now the, 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 full, the full feeling of the Holy Spirit came in. So... Let's see. Did they have the Holy Spirit first? Look at uh, John 20 verse 22. John 20 verses 22. This is before Jesus left. Okay? Look at this. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. <sighs> Are you seeing this? This is during what time? Uh, let me see. Jesus among his disciples. He's still around here on earth. Okay? He's still here. Okay? Uh, let, me, let me see. Is it really here with the... Oh, this is immediately after Jesus has rose from the dead. Okay? You see? And when he has so said, he showed unto him uh, his hands on his side and the, the disciples were glad. And, you know, he's just risen from the dead. He just, just met them in a room. They are scared and things like that. Now, what did Jesus do? <laughs> he talked to them and he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. So this is the time that now they have gotten the Holy Spirit living in them. Okay? Now they have the Holy Spirit li living in them. And then after that, they were promised now they will be filled with the Holy Spirit when now the Holy Spirit comes in full control because Jesus was still controlling the earth at this time. 
But when he would leave immediately, the Holy Spirit will come in full now to indwell people. Now that's when now we start seeing this whole other story. Let's see first in John 14 verse 26. Okay. Now this is when we start seeing now the whole story of the Holy Spirit. See, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Now, they have been promised that the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, would come. Immediately, Jesus leaves. You see, Jesus, after he has risen, he's given them the Holy Spirit. It's like, it's like a, a deposit of the Holy Spirit. Now, the one that every believer has. But then, after that, he's promised them that now the Holy Spirit will come in full force. He will come in full force. And we see this one in Acts uh, 1, verses 4, okay? And also we'll check verse 8. See, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, Ye have heard of me. Okay? Now they are sitting there. See, when the Holy Spirit comes, what would happen? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So the Holy Spirit in filling, filling of the Holy Spirit would come with power and works and signs. And you see, just the same way when someone right now is filled with the Holy Spirit, he's bold and full of power and doing great things and things like that. But when you have the Holy Spirit, yes, you're righteous, everything is good. But until you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't go out boldly and do things like that. You have to desire to be filled by the Holy Spirit by doing good and following Christ in all that you can. And you see, of course, in um, uh, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, uh, I don't know, it's from verse what, uh, let me just check. It, it, it talks about, uh, yes, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Suddenly there came sound from heaven, blah, 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 blah. You know the story. You know the story. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So now they have been filled. It's like, I think, I think somehow, it's like the disciples, uh, all the works that they had done, is like, because Jesus was here. Remember what uh, Jesus uh, said. You cannot uh, fast and pray and do all those major things because the, you are here with the groom. So until the groom leaves is the time that you will start uh, fasting and doing all that because they, they were the bride and they are already with the groom. So what are you fasting about? And you know, it's, I, I, I tend to believe that uh, it's like Jesus kept all their works and everything. And now... Because of them following Christ and doing what is right, he, he filled them in one, in one moment. All of a sudden, pop, get the Holy Spirit filled because of all the things that you've been doing all through. Because that time when uh, you were here with, uh, with uh, Jesus, then um, it was all being counted upon you. But right now, when we get saved, we don't get filled with the Holy Spirit in one day like they did. But we are filled every day as we continue hearing the word of God and doing the works of God. Remember these people, they used to hear the words of Jesus all through every day. It was coming upon them every day, every day, every day, every day. They were understanding. Here, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And every day they used to hear when Jesus was here on earth. And when he left, now all those that they had had, they transformed into the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing the point? This is so, so profound. Okay? So this feeling of the Holy Spirit, Jesus has, has promised. And it was fulfilled. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came upon all these people. And everyone who had trusted in Christ. That the outpouring resulted in courage in the face of opposition. Love for all humanity and supernatural gifts and abilities to further the gospel. Remember? Gifts and what and what? You see, the Bible is so, so precise that everything is documented. You cannot say there's nothing which is not documented. The Bible has answers for everything. These are the diversities of gifts by the same spirit. 
and there are differences of uh, administration by the same Lord, diversities of operations by the same God which worketh in all, and, and so forth. So the Holy Spirit is one, but differences. Why? Because we are all in one body, the body of, of Christ. And in that body, there are eyes, there are ears, there are legs, there are hands, and uh, there are different things. And we are not all the same. I can be a Bible teacher. Someone else can be a preacher. Someone else can be a worship leader. Someone else can uh, uh, be a helper in the church. Someone else can do this. We are not all the same. Just the same way the body does not have only eyes alone, does not have only feet alone, does not have only hair alone. We are all in the body of Christ. Okay, are you seeing that? And also the book of Hebrews tells us, Hebrews 2 verses 4, it tells us, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. You see, there are diverse stuff which are given by the Holy Spirit. So, let's continue with the story. Can you lose the Holy Spirit? Can you lose the Holy Spirit? Hmm? First, we have to understand that... Uh, it is impossible, it is impossible without the Holy Spirit to be saved. You can be saved and uh, you say, I'm saved but I don't have the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. Because salvation, it's only possible with the Holy Spirit. Okay? You have to understand this. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. What does it tell us? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. It says, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. You see? One spirit into one body. So how can you be a member of that body and you don't have, you're not baptized with that one spirit? How can you be a member of that body of Christ and you don't have the Holy Spirit? You see, it's impossible for you to say you're saved and you don't have the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because even Jesus explained this to Nicodemus. You remember? In John uh, 3, from verse 1 to 21, just go and read that story. Nicodemus was a leader of the Jewish religion, and he wanted to know what Jews, what laws he could keep, or additional action that he could perform, that would guarantee his eternal life. But Jesus responded, saying that there was nothing that Nicodemus could do, that's, that, uh, 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 and that salvation was uh, basically a work of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that he could do. Without the Holy Spirit to work in a, in a repentant heart, no one can be born again. No one can be born again. Regardless of how many sinners' prayers uh, he prays or Christian actions he performs, it is the Holy Spirit who regenerates and re uh, renews a heart. Okay, So you can't have good works without the Holy Spirit. You can't be regenerated without the Holy Spirit. See, the book of Titus. Titus 3 verses 5. Okay? See, it is the work of the Holy Spirit, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. It's not about our things, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Are you seeing this point? So, you can say you're saved and you don't have the Holy Spirit. It, it, it doesn't work like that. So, an issue related to losing the Holy Spirit is uh, what we call the eternal security. There are people who are worried about that. And uh, this is all about the action and the story of can I lose my salvation? There are people who worry, mm, can I lose my salvation? You see, to lose salvation would be to lose the Holy Spirit who provides it. In fact, the scripture says that the Holy Spirit seals our salvation until we experience its completeness in the presence of God. Remember what I told you in Ephesians 1. Verse 13. So, the Holy Spirit is sealed until that day of completion. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, Ephesians 1.13, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also of that, that, uh, after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, after you, you, you trust after you hear. What do you hear? You hear the gospel. Now, once you hear the gospel of your salvation, and you trust it, and you believe it, then you are believing and trusting is the same. After you hear the gospel and you believe it, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You remember the Holy Spirit who was promised that I will not leave you as orphans. I will give you the Holy Spirit who will abide with you forever. So that Holy Spirit is sealed the moment you believe. 
Why? Because that Holy Spirit is the earnest or is the assurance of our inheritance in heaven. It's an assurance that, hey guys, this, you will inherit. You will inherit in the kingdom of God until the redemption, okay? That is the assurance until our bodies are redeemed in the rapture, okay? And our bodies are mixed with the purchased possession, which is the soul and the spirit. Because the soul and spirit has been purchased, is a purchased uh, possession. But the body is still not yet redeemed, it's still sinful, our body is still weak. Until the rapture, our bodies will be changed. You see? So, the Holy Spirit is already sealed in any believer. And that's why the Bible says in Ephesians 4, verses 30, it says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Because he is inside you and is not going out. So, don't grieve him. And I think that's where people tend to think, so if I'm being told not to grieve the Holy Spirit, does it mean that uh, I can grieve him and then he can leave? No. The Bible is saying he is sealed unto the day of redemption. If you seal something and tell somebody, I've sealed this letter. And this letter will only be opened on Christmas Day. So how are you going to open that letter before? It's not possible. And the one who has sealed is God. So are you going to battle with God and say, no, I have to unseal that Holy Spirit. How, how now? The Holy Spirit is sealed in you. He's sealed in you. Okay? There's no way he can go out. And for the Holy Spirit to vacate a heart that he had promised to seal would make him unfaithful. Because one of the Holy Spirit's uh, tasks after moving into a believing heart is transforming that person into the image of Christ. Okay? We have to be transformed into the image of Christ. As the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, let's go there. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5 verse 17. Okay. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creature. Uh, the old things are past. Behold, all things are become new. Okay. You have to understand that. So everything is past and everything has become new. So he transforms you into something different. So if you're a new creature, are you going to behave like the old creature? How now? It's, it's, it's not possible. Okay? It's not possible. And the Bible says, For whom did he foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So you are changed. You are transformed into the image of his son. How did the son of God behave and work? He was sinless. That's why the Bible says uh, uh, anyone who is in Christ cannot sin because uh, the, the seed of God is in him. Are you, are you seeing the point? And the Bible tells us that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. He will not stop it. He will not stop it. So he's transforming us to have what? The mind of Christ. We think like Christ. We do like Christ. We, 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 we perform things like Christ. Just like the disciples. Think about them. They behaved exactly how Jesus used to behave. Casting out demons, uh, doing what? Uh, being powerful, uh, speaking against the hypocrites, and uh, doing what is right. Just the same way the Bible talks about how Jesus lived. So they had the mind of Christ. So the one who began a good work in you will finish that work. Philippians 1.6 And we do not believe that the Spirit will undo his work of regeneration and give up on his transformative work or redefine eternal life to mean temporary life. No, it's, it's not possible. And since we don't find the Holy Spirit, okay, we did not find or we did not give ourselves the Holy Spirit. He, he, he came when we believed. It is doubtful that we can also take him away. We, how can we lose him? Some, some people take issue with the word lose and uh, they say that while a Christian cannot lose the Holy Spirit or he, she can forfeit the uh, gifts of salvation, he brings by a willful renouncement of him. So if like you renounce Christ by yourself and say, I don't want him, that uh, you will lose him. C come on. The Bible does not say that. 
like we read in Ephesians 1.13, it is says that he was sealed. And we don't maintain our salvation. Our salvation is maintained by God. Okay? We don't maintain our salvation by our works. Just the same way that we were not saved by works. Neither can works maintain our salvation. Works are only about the rewards we will get in heaven. So salvation and works are two different things. Okay? Are you getting the point? That, so when the, Holy, the Bible tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit or uh, not to quench the Holy Spirit, you see this is uh, one of the words. Eh? People look at, oh, don't quench don't quench man you're quenching the holy spirit you know if you quench him what is going to happen to you see quench not the holy spirit now when you look at this saying quench not the holy spirit these passages do not imply that the holy spirit has left us or that he is sorrowful because of our sinful actions the grieving and the quenching of the holy spirit the quen this grieving or quenching the holy spirit uh, only hinders our fellowship with him, but does not nullify our salvation. In much the same way that, uh, just the same way like a rebellious child may lose fellowship of a parent, but is not kicked out of the family. When when a child is, is rebellious to, a, to, to his father, is he kicked out of the family? No. He's only rebellious. He'll try to be uh, uh, corrected. The father will try to correct and correct and do whatever. And if that child dies in his uh, mischiefs, who will bury him? His father. <laughs> Are you seeing the point? So what causes confusion on this issue is that we cannot know whether someone else has truly been born of the Spirit or whether he's the shallow soil of Jesus as described in uh, Luke 8, 1 to 15. What causes that confusion is because people, they don't really understand that salvation is complete and we are complete in Christ and you cannot lose anything which you don't own. You see, many people look at, uh, many people look at uh, these verses, just like I've told you, uh, for example, like this verse in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it says, I never knew you, depart from me. Do you, do you, do you, have you seen this verse before? Matthew uh, 7, uh, 7 verses uh, 21 to 23. Now, there are people who look at this and say, oh, if you don't, go, don't, go, you don't do good, Jesus is going to tell you, uh, you're going to lose your salvation. But look at these verses very well. Let's, let's look at them very well. Can you really lose your salvation? And what was Jesus saying here? He says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, when people hear doing the will of my Father which is in heaven, they think is works. Those who don't do the good works, they are going to lose salvation. But what is the will of God? The will of God is to believe. Is to believe in whom Christ sent. And I'm going to read you that verse. I don't, I don't have it in, in, in mind, but I'm going to search here. First, let's continue. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And people look at this and they say, what? You see, these are people who are in church. They lost their salvation. But look at the next verse. And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that you work iniquity. Now, why does Jesus tell them that I never knew you? If you meet someone today, somewhere in Africa, and you travel to Canada, and you meet them again in Canada, are you going to tell them I have never known you? Come on, uh, unless your, your mind is, is uh, there is something wrong with your mind. You will definitely remember them. You will only say, I never knew you because you have never, that maybe you are just in a function somewhere in Africa and you're speaking and he was among the people in the crowd. And when people were asking questions, you never communicated. So you never had a personal relationship. He never knew you in person. And when you meet with him, he tells you, hey, I never knew you. You tell him, but, but I was in that function. I was in that kind of perfect. He will tell you, come on, you never spoke to me. I never got to have fellowship with you in anything. So, how do you know Christ? You know Christ through salvation. 
being born again. When you're born again, that is when you get to know Christ. He knows you and you know him. You tell him, hey, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And once you do that, now you've communicated to him. He knows you. But there are so many people out there in the church today who have never believed the gospel, who have never understood the gospel, they have never believed the gospel. That's why Jesus, how will he say he knows you and you have never even known the gospel? Those are the kind of people he will tell, depart from me, I never knew you. Why? Because for sure he's never known them. And how is it to know Christ? Is to believe the gospel, to do the will of his father. If you do the will of his father, then you have known Christ. You know Christ by doing what God commanded. Believe in his son. Believe in Jesus Christ. When you believe in him, then you're saved. It's not the works. You see, most of these people, they think because they were in church, they gave tithes and offering and cast out demons. Remember, there are even people in the time of Paul who were casting out demons in the name of Jesus whom, the, whom Paul preaches. You remember that story? There are some people who were casting out demons one day. The, during the time of Apostle Paul. And uh, they went to cast out some demons. And uh, they used to cast out demons saying, In the name of uh, Jesus, whom Paul preaches, get out. And uh, one day, the demons were tired of these guys. And they asked them one day, You, come on, Paul we know, and Jesus we know, but who are you? Who are you? You're casting, out, you're casting us out in the, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Who are you guys? And they tore their clothes and, uh, and uh, beat them up senselessly because those are people who are just casting out demons in a name who, which is preached by another guy. You see, this is the same kind of thing. People being in church doesn't mean all of them they are saved because they cast out demons. But unless they know Christ... He will tell you, I never knew you. I don't know if that has made some sense. I don't have the other verse which I wanted to tell you, but uh, okay, let me let me let me let me let me try and search this. The will, who does the will of my father? Okay, what is the work of God? The work of God, uh, the work of God. Let me show you. Uh, I don't know if I'll get this verse. Mm, it's in the New Testament. The work of God. Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, yes, here, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. So this is the whole work. The whole work is not the works. Those works are basically for your rewards. But the work of God is to do what? To believe. That's all you need to do. Believe. Okay. So many people profess to have the Holy Spirit, but eventually prove that they were imposters. When their lives will be turned away. That day. When they will be told away from me. They will see it. Okay. But people cannot lose the Holy Spirit. Okay. When you see somebody backslide. And you hear. Oh this person backslid. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah? You see. Come on. This is guy. He, he was saved. But uh, man. He backslid. He backslid. I think he lost the Holy Spirit. He lost it. You see, when you hear somebody has backslidden, this is what usually happens. These people, they were not saved in the first place. Look, the Bible says they went out from us, but they were not of us. But if they had been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out from us that it might be made manifest they were not with us. These are the people, when you hear their backslidden, they were not even with us. They were not even saved in the first place. But they were, they went, they backslid or what happened, they say. So that it may be made manifest, they were fakes. So you can't lose the Holy Spirit. You can't lose the Holy Spirit. Because if you say you're losing the Holy Spirit, then uh, my friends, all what you're saying, if you're saying you're losing the Holy Spirit, then it means... Um, the Holy Spirit did not come from God. You gave yourself the Spirit. You can't lose the Holy Spirit. Okay? Have you understood? So, if you're still out there and you don't know how to be saved, and now you can get the Holy Spirit, there's only one way that you can be saved, through the Gospel. What is the Gospel? The Gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. And it's all about 
why Jesus died, okay, why Jesus died, and how Jesus died. You have to understand that. So, why did Jesus die? The Bible tells us that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died for our sins. He didn't die for no, nothing. And uh, how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. Why? Because uh, without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. The book of Hebrews tells us. And why the blood? Because the Bible tells us in Leviticus 17.11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And it is only the blood which makes atonement for the soul. But it's not just any other blood. It's innocent blood. So we are all sinners. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, while it was, uh, we, uh, uh, we are all sinners. Okay, no one, is, uh, uh, no one is clean. We are all sinners. Okay, and the wages of sin is death. But you have to remember, 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, someone called Jesus died for us. He shed his innocent blood so that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. If you understand that that death of Jesus was not in vain but was for you, then my friend, all that you need to do is confess what you believe to Christ. Tell him, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins, you were buried and rose again, as the Bible says. And my friends, once you do that and you confess it out, then you're saved. You're saved and you can't lose your Holy Spirit. And God cannot tell you one day, depart from me. Now you know Christ. Hope this has been a blessing to you. I know it's been a long video, but uh, it was important for us to understand. If you enjoy this video, please give it a, a like, give it a thumbs up so that it can be able to be shown to more people uh, by suggestions. And also you can uh, share the video for others to know and also uh, subscribe to watch more videos and hit the notification bell so that whenever we post a new video, we you can always be the first to be informed. God bless you. Check out... Uh, on the description, we have uh, other links of other channels that we have. Please go and check them out. Uh, it will be very encouraging for us. God bless you and have a good time.